Hey guys, it's Woody the Unexceptional Gamer, and I'll start off talking about the gameplay, then get into other stuff shortly. Uh, sometimes I like to cover opening routes. So uh, I grab the first flag, and then what I like to do from here is jump on the steps, because it is an excellent counter to uh, th those guys in the room. So some guys are going to take C-Dom, then they run right in there. Um, this spot is much better than the spot I just where that guy died, because I have a much better retreat. You know, if, if they retreat, you can't see them anymore, but you can still shoot through the walls if you have any idea where they are. Sometimes they're just a bullet or two away from uh, getting finished off. And uh, But on the steps, on the other hand, they're completely bulletproof. So, so I'm in good shape, and he is not. So, uh, so yeah. Um... Oh, oh, so, so that's my opening route gameplay, but I didn't really want to talk about the game a ton. What I wanted to do was uh, was talk about something else. So, uh, about, I don't know, I'll say two or three weeks ago, my wife found out that both of her parents have cancer. And um, that's kind of a, it's kind of a big deal <laughs> to, to find that out. Um, uh, what do you say? So, uh, they, her mother has uh, colon cancer, and her father has bladder cancer. So, um, uh, they're, with her mother, uh, at the moment, she seems like the less serious of the two cases because uh, um, she doesn't seem to be in the same amount of pain as her father. So, her father had surgery to remove the cancer uh, not too long ago, and uh, I'll say like three days ago, but um, they weren't able to completely remove the bladder. So it, apparently it's somehow attached to like the colon or prostate or some other thing um, because uh, and through some blood vessels and, and because of that, um, he's going to undergo something else next. I'm not sure if it's chemo or if it's uh, um, radiation or what. Um, my brother had cancer twice actually and um, uh, chemo is actually pretty tough to endure. You know, it's, it's really a problem. But um, radiation is not, so I don't, I don't know what they have in, in mind for him. But uh, but yeah, so so her parents are in kind of a rough spot right now, and and they mean a lot to me. So uh, either that <laughs> a lot of guys have asked where Death Spank has been because we haven't been playing it uh, lately. But uh, th that's really the cause. We'll, we'll get back to Death Spank. We'll finish that thing out. It, it's a fun game to play, but uh, right now Death Spank's kind of taking a backseat to um, uh, to other things, and and you know. The, the point behind a Let's Play is to have, like, you know, everyone have a fun time together. And that doesn't happen so much uh, lately. <laughs> so so what do you say? You know, that, uh, not every day is, uh, is the best day ever. So, um, uh, what next? Oh, oh, so the other thing I wanted to talk about was, was kind of like parents aging, you know. They, they, if you guys are in, say, college yet, then, like, you, you know what I'm about to talk about. That It's funny, like... Parents don't age, right? It, you you don't see them as, as getting older. They um they started off old. They've always been old, right? Compared to to you, and uh, um to then like you know, you know I, I guess you sort of subconsciously know that they got older, but uh, um you, you you think of them the same way all the time. This guy I guess fooled me. <laughs> so uh, um. Yeah, so like her father is 73. I don't know how old her mother is. She's probably getting mad if I get her, her age wrong, but I, I'm going to call her like 71 or, or something like that. And uh, um, her father um, is this big, strong guy. So, so when I met him, he was an active fireman. Uh, he owned a weightlifting club, and that was, of course, his hobby. And... Uh, uh, he, he has like 17 or 18 inch biceps and he's just always been you know, so big and, and so strong that health always seemed like it wasn't a problem for him and uh, to see him now you know he's he's 73 years old and I'm, I'm like I don't he's the strongest old guy I know I'm not familiar <laughs> with uh, with old guys that that look like he does and um, I guess I'm waiting here for a little backup on Bravo team cap it so my my picture of an old man is kind of a guy who's gotten you know, who's edged his way towards the frail side of body types, but uh, but he's not that at all. And I saw a picture of him in the ICU, the intensive care unit, uh, yesterday, and uh, he still looks like he could beat me in an arm wrestling contest, even though he's you know 73 years old and and working his way through cancer. So um, 
it's just it, it's kind of an interesting dynamic in, in how it's hard to see the people around you age and you know he's he's 73 and he has cancer and i hope that things work out well for him but uh um you know it's a it's a tricky thing isn't it like i don't know he's been on my mind a lot lately and uh and next up is um is her mother so we'll we'll see how that goes too that'll be a, a big thing for us to to figure out so um uh yeah my um i mentioned my brother had cancer so that was that was kind of a big deal in my family he uh he started off with cancer in his thigh bone it's called osteosarcoma was the variety of bone cancer that he had and uh oh guy got me um so uh um osteosarcoma is kind of a big deal and uh but with my brother it was it was neat to see the progression of expectations like when he first got cancer uh, we were hoping that he would live and then um you know as things started moving along we were hoping that he uh uh that, that he would keep his leg, right? That was a big deal. And then the, the next step after that was we were hoping that he would, um, you know, have retain some level of athleticism. And, uh, you know, these expectations just kept getting higher and higher. And that was kind of a neat thing uh, to be a part of, it, if, if you call, you know, being brother as being part of it. But um, uh, what actually happened with him is they ended up, uh, the surgery on his leg, it's it's kind of like an amputation that right above the knee they removed his bone and then somewhere in his shin you know they removed his bone and then replaced it with a uh, an artificial knee so so that's where he was and then you know cancer came back it was in his lung and now he seems to be fine which is which is really good news but um, uh, now I, I see my wife's parents going through it and uh, yeah cancer really sucks man <laughs> what's all that about um with the chemo like people say that the chemo is hard but uh until you've seen it like wow it uh it is so difficult to endure that it seems like most people get suicidal on it and then um a lot of people a ton of people end up committing you know what i think of as a kind of suicide which is that they decide to um to not go through chemo and instead uh, they you know, so they decide not to go through chemo, and instead they decide that you know they would rather have a shorter life with a higher quality of life. And um, you know I hope that these decisions aren't something that that Jackie's parents have to go through because because that would be that would be a mess. You know nobody wants that. Um, my own parents, you know, they've made it really clear that. You know, like they, it's called a living will, and uh, you know, if things get rough for them, they would rather pretty much you know, have it be over than than have a really long, you know, end of life period that uh, that isn't top notch. Um, I think Jackie's family has a different philosophy. They want to you know live as long as they possibly can, and I can respect both viewpoints. Really, you know, they, they both make perfect sense to me. My wife and I were just talking about um, what we would do, you know, if we were in that situation, and. Um, and for her, it was like, no, 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 you have an obligation. No, our kids are younger. You know, we have an obligation to live as long as we possibly can every single day. And uh, um, the guy, I had a different view of it. You know, from my standpoint, it was uh, um, like, you know, you, if your prognosis is good, then you keep fighting. If your prognosis is bad, then, then you stop fighting. And she was like not not into that she was like no 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 you know if your last uh, couple of months are really really awful but it's a couple of months that you wouldn't have had otherwise then you know you do it because you know to her it's like you know it's an obligation towards young kids but um you know i don't know what's rougher on young kids watching your parents suffer or um you know losing your parents I, it's uh it's not an easy call and it's uh uh, it's what's been going on in my family lately so uh, yeah not every day is the best day ever so um, uh, I, I hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, maybe found it something worth listening to uh, I'll try to have some more upbeat ones in the future and uh, have a good day